morning. Thank you for having us. We're Team 3. I'm Simone DePew. I'm Pamela Davis. I'm Isidoro Ramirez. I'm Joshua Norris. And I'm Sheila Kuzai. So firstly, I will quickly outline our approach. We identified the mission for this grant um, to seek to maximize the number of insured uh, patients receiving quality care um, at the most optimal cost structure. So we used two different frameworks um, to make sure that the option that we chose best aligned with this mission. We chose a cost benefit analysis because this is absolutely a cost management issue, but it's important to realize that it's much more than that also. So we did the SWOT matrix to analyze the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and threats um, associated with our ultimate decision as well. Thanks, Simone. So I'm just going to review a few key facts about the Department of Corrections. So this is option one, and the state has a prison population of 50,000, right? So the total medical care cost for these inmates is $223 million per year. Hospitals are giving a 75% discount to the DOC. However, Medicaid does not receive this discount. Therefore, Medicaid would have to pay $892 million per year. From our sample size, 71% are hospitalized longer than 24 hours. So this makes them eligible for Medicaid. This can be extrapolated to the entire prison population. I'm going to talk about option two, um, allocating funds to the 100 grand uh, grant towards the Department of Veterans Services. Uh, we know that in the state there's currently 900,000 veterans. 368,000 of these veterans are eligible for VA benefits. Currently there's 168,000 veterans that are using Medicaid. And from our sample set, we know that 81% or four out of five are eligible for VA benefits. With only one out of four of eligible veterans in the state have applied for VA benefits. The VA health benefits are often more generous than state Medicaid benefits and often reduce long-term care Medicaid loans. Washington State saved over three or $30 million moving veterans from Medicaid onto the federal program. My colleague Izzy is now gonna talk about our decision. Yes, good morning. So as far as our decision, we decided to go with option two, Department of Veterans Services because we do not need to reinvent the wheel. We'll be following Washington State's program and use it to identify current veterans who are enrolled in Medicaid and try to get them switched over to VA benefits. Furthermore, if we awarded the grant to DOC, it would add strain to the current resources. A current DCH representative informed us that they do not have the capacity to handle new Medicaid applications without sacrificing extended processing times and service to their clients. Furthermore, this is a cost efficient option because the grant is only $100,000. We can identify 134,000 veterans who may be eligible for VA benefits. And this option will also alleviate DCH's workload and streamline the business process and free up additional resources for other state for other state people who are eligible for Medicaid benefits. So now I'm going to go ahead and transfer over to my colleague, Sheila. So I'm going to explain and break down, um, you know, the cost efficiency between, you know, which really if the, which, um, which department um, would use the services and um, ultimately how much savings are we really getting out of this and how much um, threats are we getting on the other side. So we have with um, DOC, um, we know from the, from the statistics we've received from the case studies that uh, the population is 50,000 uh, within the state and for veterans is 900,000. However, when we calculated from the random sample we were given of all the, um, all the hospital costs, uh, we equated for $4.8 million um, were being spent um, of hospital costs by the inmates, and then we, um, we equated for the veterans is 240,000. Um, again, we were given this as a monthly sample, so we um, obviously multiplied that by 12 to give us a yearly estimate and um, keep the units of measurement the same. Um, we go down looking at the psychiatric costs. Because we were given the information of the diagnosis um, for, the, uh, for the inmates and knowing exactly where, why they were going to the hospital, um, we were allowed to extrapolate um, how many were for psychiatric versus um, primary care, and we were able to get 4.6 million out of the 4.8 million in for psychiatric cost, which is huge. Um, however, we were not able to um, um, get that for the veteran, 
parents because we're not given the exact diagnosis for their visits. Uh, for Medicaid eligibility um, with the inmates, um, <clears throat> we were able to calculate 71% um, as population would be Medicaid eligible. Uh, for Medicaid spendings each year, so this is how much from who is um, from who is currently Medicaid eligible right now from the veterans and who is um, who would be Medicaid eligible uh, from the inmates. We were able to create for 223 million um, are used on the inmates and the veterans are 404 million. Um, so again, if you look at the scenario that we're pointing to, if we would move veterans um, from the Medicaid system to the, um, to the VA system, essentially you, you would be saving roughly $400 million, estimate. But I'm going to go down um, to the last slide there and explain that more. And um, as stated by the ACA, we know that right now 100% is um, covered and the state would not have to pay any um, extra fees for Medicaid eligible uh, or newly met Medicaid um, patients, but now, as of 2020, states are responsible for 10%, and with the random sample we were given, we were able to estimate $475,000 of costs that the state would have to pay in 2020. Again, that number can increase due to, you know, in five years from now, but that's from the current sample that um, we received. And lastly, um, from, from the state savings, so once Medicaid recipients switch to the VA, um, since we know that, um, <clears throat> since, we, since we knew how many um, were actually Medicaid uh, eligible and were enrolled, um, we we're going to be saving about $330 million, uh, and which is huge. And we also want to, um, in, this, in this last point was really our golden piece, because what is the purpose of this? The purpose of this is to um, lower health costs, but also provide the best service um, that we can and also not look at a scenario that we would need more grant money for more resources, etc. This is the system would essentially um, notify those who are who might not even know that they're eligible and educate them on those benefits. Um, and we also want to um, mention that this chart is um, there's just two key points and it's not measuring inmates who may or may not be enrolled in Medicare. Hence, the figures are not measuring for Medicare, elig Medicare eligibility requirements. And um, it also, assuming um, that the national percentage from our equations of veterans are 40% is reflective of state's percentage. This was stated by um, the DVS representative yesterday during our client meetings, who said we could assume that 40% is the same for the state. Now I'm going to pass it on to Simone, who will go over our swap matrix for our decision. Thank you, Sheila. This is our SWOT matrix. First, I'll address the strengths associated with this option. Firstly, this would be a huge Medicaid savings for the state, um, as Sheila already explained. Also, veterans no longer have to pay back long-term Medicaid loans due to the VA coverage, um, which is a huge plus. Um, it also alleviates the complexity of the VA eligibility process for veterans, um, ensures that veterans are receiving access to quality care. Um, and as Izzy mentioned previously, it maintains the current amount of resources for the DHC, so the DHC is not met with an influx of applications, um, and so they don't have to um, bring on more staff to uh, process these applications. Weaknesses, currently one out of five veterans are not eligible, um, so this is a small pool that won't, be, um, that won't have access to this, but it's important to note that four out of five veterans are eligible for VA benefits. Um, so for opportunities. Our pilot program can follow the previous referral framework of um, the Paris Veterans uh, Benefits Enhancement Program that Washington State employed um, that saved over $30 million for Washington State. Um, also, Medicaid costs are rising each year. Um, Kaiser quoted that uh, long-term Medicaid dollars are increasing at a rate of 300% annually since 2015. Um, and the, the last opportunity, we could implement maximum efficiency through new technological processes um, to um, improve the referral operating system. Um, and lastly, threats. So currently there's a large set of overlapping data and duplicate data entries um, in the process, but we are very confident that with this grant, um, we could 
alleviate these technical problems through our referral system. Um, and lastly, the last threat is it's a federal requirement that veterans have to roll annually, annually uh, for VA benefits, but this is a federal requirement um, and, and that doesn't really align with the purpose of this grant. Um, so we're focusing on other key areas to establish maximum efficiency. But through the SWAT, you can see that the strengths and opportunities greatly outweigh the weaknesses and threats. So with that, Izzy will speak more on our recommendations. Thank you, Simone. As far as recommendations, we're going to follow a similar framework to what's being done in Washington State. We're using a Veterans Benefit Enhancement Program paired with the Paris system to identify veterans who are eligible for VA benefits. Option two is politically feasible because state expenditures on Medicaid will decrease and will also lead to huge cost savings for the state. Furthermore, we move people off of Medicaid, transfer them over to VA benefits, thus freeing up more resources the state can use for people who are eligible for Medicaid. And lastly, we created a mutual beneficial relationship between the Department of Veterans Services and Medicaid, precisely because we are freeing up the resources that could be used for other Medicaid beneficiaries. And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and create an outreach program to make, to make veterans aware of the benefits they're entitled to. So it's also important to note that over the past 10 years, veterans have sacrificed a lot for this country. And by giving them the, making them aware of the benefits that they are entitled to, it's a way of paying back to them and also freeing up state resources too. So this is a way of our saying thanks to veterans, making sure they get the care, care they're entitled for. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank thank you. you. from 900,000 who are Medicaid eligible because of the percentage we were given, which I believe um, was 7%. 7%. Yes, yeah, 7% of um, 900,000, and that's how we got 240. Right. So then, um, or I'm sorry. The 7% of those that are on uh, Medicaid as currently are veterans. So yeah. that's what we're able to extrapolate. But, but the 240,000, that is just, not that's excluding, that we're not into Medicaid yet. That's just in general the total hospital cost. So we have it, um, that's just what we were given from the Excel sheet. From the sample size on this. So that's the cost of? The sample size. The sample the sample. Veterans who are on Medicaid. How no, much? they're not all on Medicaid. I think five of them were not on Medicaid technically. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it's the cost for everyone on Medicaid that's a veteran. Um, but yeah. this is the ones that we are looking at that would be also eligible for, um, for veteran services. Okay. So, by being able to take the full amount, so we're extrapolating from the amount of people that we have, and we're able to say they're eligible for VA benefits, and bringing that across to the 168,000 veterans that are currently using the Medicaid system, we're able to extrapolate out that we would save $331 million over the course of the year. So, yeah, it, 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 the, the math that I, so 331 million is a one-time savings, and if I'm, you got, how did you, is it 404 million in Medicaid savings times 82% of eligibles? I'm trying to find out how, how we got to 331 million, and then I wanted to determine, is that a one-time savings? So that's actually an annual savings, it's a recurring savings, because every year what we found was they were spending $404 million on Medicaid of those that were eligible. And we brought out and checked and saw that by bringing all of that in and seeing who has the benefits, we were able to bring out and extrapolate that the state savings every year is $331 million by bringing those veterans that are eligible over into um, veterans affairs. So we, ex we specifically, focused on the veterans that are eligible. So we said 
modify to Medicaid. We weren't using the same um, um, figures from the spending each year because those are different. Okay, so I understand theoretically if you get everyone off of Medicaid, but right now you can't deny folks Medicaid coverage if they're eligible. So what would be your actual expected enrollment of veterans into VA benefits? And so you wouldn't realize that 330 the first year. What would be your projections over the next few years and how likely would veterans actually discontinue Medicaid that's something that we're happy to look at over time and give you a detailed analysis on, which we're happy to do. But I mean, we will point to the fact that this exact same program was um, was, um, was in was Washington State. In Washington State um, and the people in Washington State was that the veterans who were made aware that they were eligible for VA benefits were more than likely to switch over because VA benefits were more generous than Medicaid and they didn't have to take off these Medicaid long-term loans and have them go into bankruptcy. So that's the other thing too, is that the VA benefits were more generous, provided greater quality care and more services than Medicaid. Um, but what another point, thank you, is another point to really address is the fact that we're making them, really this money would be going towards making them aware of the referral process, right? So um, referring, um, current um, veterans who may be on Medicaid, by the way, you're also um, you're also eligible to be on VA benefits. This is a huge problem right now nationally and statewide where states are not educating their veterans um, and letting them know of their VA benefits. Whether they choose to move to that option is ultimately up to them, but from the statistics that I've shown and what we have projected here, it is proven that it is more high like, more of a likely chance of them switching to VA once they are made aware of it. The problem that they're not doing right now is the fact, the reason why they're not switching is because they are not educated, the process is wrong, it's tiresome, and they, um, they don't understand their benefits. So this money would essentially be going towards recognizing those be um, veterans and being able to help them make that decision. It's kind of like when you're gonna get your retirement fund when you're going to retire, you have an advisor, they tell you all your benefits of, of when you're going to be retired. Very similar process because we don't have that personalized care for them. Um, and last thing you know, the savings, we can estimate at least 30 million because of Washington State. Um, and that is something um, that we really, from all the information we had, we could only follow um, uh, the same um, framework. And that's. How does our state's population compare to Washington? You said we can save at least 30 million. We, we weren't given that. I mean, at least if we we could have configured that, we would have. But we weren't given Washington State's population. We just were given um, those facts. And then I have one other question. I believe you mentioned something about technology, technology processes somewhere in your recommendation. Can you walk me Can you walk me through what your recommendation specifically is regarding technology? Well, so again, following the pilot program, um, the Veterans Benefit Enhancement Program, there were obviously when we are looking over the threats, what are the possible um, you know, threats that can happen with any data system? And one challenge that they, um, that they had, also California had, when they implemented the system was the, um, because of the number of duplicates, so that I believe there were 16,000 um, um, veterans that they were able to recognize that were VA eligible. But because they were both, um, there was um, many, Many of them were also duplicates of Medicaid in different states. They had to extrapolate them, and it went down to 4,000. And out of those 4,000, 1,600 were VA benefit, um, VA um, had VA benefits, and so really they could have gotten a lot more. But because they were duplicates, they weren't really uh, because of the overlapping data, they weren't really allowed to um, get the maximum amount of uh, recognize the maximum amount of people for VA benefits. So our system, we would essentially um, want to innovate that and try to um, really um, deter that um, outlier and really deter um, um, that um, from happening with our system because it's good to learn from similar case studies. 